So, uh, how long uh, has been Collabora involved in the LibreOffice project? Well, it's a really good question. Of course, Collabora sort of has been around for eight years now, doing great things on uh, uh, LibreOffice. But uh, I mean, we we founded LibreOffice together, as you know, uh, Italo. So, uh, you know, I think we've been involved for for a long time. And many of my team came from Sousa, um, were spun out, and uh, helped form Collabora to help you know sustain and drive uh, LibreOffice. So, uh, Collabora productivity, I should mention. Yeah. Uh, which are Collabora uh, main objectives for sponsoring the LibreOffice conference? Yeah, so uh, great question. I mean, I, I think really I often go just to to meet the people and understand what's going on. You know, of course, to celebrate another year of uh, achievement, I think is, uh, is, is always good. And, and so many friends and, and colleagues at the conference. And, and there's some great content there, I think, uh, too. And, <clears throat> you know, inspiring technical talks, you know exchanging ideas and sharing sharing information is, is, is really pretty cool and the hope is of course live streaming and then we can reach even more people and can actually you know gather in one, one place um so yeah and we just love to uh, you know show off the value of uh, you know supported versions of LibreOffice, particularly you know collabora collabora office and uh, and and you know the value then for people wanting to migrate with actual real support and uh, you know people caring about them uh, deeply and, and you know answering their, their queries and questions and, and helping sort of smooth that transition and de-risk it uh, for people. So we, we love to get that message out that we're uh, you know we can get uh, get those products out and uh, benefit everyone, the community as we contribute back. Um, you know, Calabra obviously as we you know employ and, and grow grow and uh, the, the customers they get just a much better experience and so they don't you know sort of hit roadblocks and, and stumbling blocks that, that hurt their migration. Uh, according to analysts, the office suite market segment will grow at a yearly rate of 5% during the next five years to reach a global value of $30 billion, which, by the way, is the value that the, this market used to have uh, around 2009, 2010. Where do you see LibreOffice in uh, this scenario? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we need to continue to grow. <clears throat> it's good. I mean, Calabra is growing at a small multiple of 5%. So apparently we're gaining market share uh, according to those uh, projections, which is exciting. And, uh, you know, we have a great product already. So, I mean, I, I position, uh, you know, LibreOffice really, um, when I think about it in, in five years, not only as a, as a PC product that you can use, but as a fantastic technology and a foundation for building productivity, document applications, Anything, you know, generating PDFs, doing invoicing, calculations, like there's so much richness um, in that technology underpinning. And I think uh, that, that's what I'm most excited about, seeing that, that grow and spread uh, into even more places. Since the launch of the LibreOffice project, the end of desktop productivity has been predicted several times and actually even before, but the application are still alive and it looks like growing again. Which is your opinion on the future of this market segment? Yeah, so I think that's, that's the exciting thing about LibreOffice is really its maturity and its completeness. And you often get people sitting down and thinking, oh, it's easy to write a word processor. And that's, it is easy to write a word processor. It's just not easy to write one that can interoperate and handle that huge corpus of, you know, the whole industry's technical decisions. And, and, and it's quite interesting to see the ping pong there. You know, uh, one app implements a feature, another app then interoperates with it. And just this sort of ladder effect of growing functionality is then reflected in file formats and just the, the depth of complexity of, of coping with all of that. And I think LibreOffice, as a technology base just has the most wonderful mature and complete uh, interoperability story there of, of any product you know um so i think i think that's really uh, you know that that's really a, just a killer feature and that's never going to go away and you know of course obviously on top of that we build a collabora online you know reclaim your digital sovereignty uh, over documents and workloads and so on on your own hardware and, and network under your control and you know we see lots of examples of that being really useful uh, so you know, being able to control your documents, you know, whether it's the, the, the diagrams or the, the technical specs of a new car uh, that you can then show to your sales team, but without them being able to copy and send it on, you know, with their name carefully watermarked on the server over all of it. Um, so we see that, you know, continuing to grow and, and reusing the technology there. But against that, I think, you know, users still will always want a PC desktop product. And you know, I'm excited to see more PC uh, PCs being sold, more laptops out there, keyboards. Keyboards are awesome. You know, we should... Uh, uh, yeah, then use use fat clients uh, PC apps as well. I think. 
During the last 18 months uh, with the pandemic, uh, open source software and uh, LibreOffice also have helped people working from home and this has increased the global number of users. Do you see this as a trend also for the future uh, when the pandemic will be hopefully uh, over uh, or it was just a kind of specific? Uh... Yeah, yeah, who can say? Um, so, I, I mean, we, I, I've worked at home exclusively for, for 25 years, uh, punctuated with conference travel to meet my uh, my friends, like at, like at the LibreOffice conference, which is exciting, but around the world, uh, telling people about the goodness of, uh, of LibreOffice and other software beforehand. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's easy to work from home with a free software stack and, and do it from ground up. Um, we run an entirely distributed company, nearly entirely. There are a few locations in Cambridge and Montreal, but, you know, 150 people, uh, working using uh, Linux base and of course Collabor Collabor Office, LibreOffice based on top of that. I mean that runs our whole business, you know, from finance, accounting, HR, in all of all of the, the shared functions to the engineers are doing stuff. So yeah, um, it, it all works. Uh, it works from home. Uh, and I think there's actually a real strength in not having clusters of people that communicate more at higher frequency in the office. It's actually one of the one of the best best ways to do this is to have everyone working from home, and you know it, it works well. And <clears throat> yeah, but in that context, of course, there's also home PCs and uh, you know people wanting an office suite, and so you know it's really thrilling to see you know, LibreOffice being useful to people there, and you know all of our hard work are being used and appreciated by more people. So I think that will continue. People will work from home; they they love it. It, it saves a fortune in commuting fees and loads of time and hassle. Uh, and you can be more productive in many ways. So I think everyone's going to work at home for some portion of their life, unless it's a manual, very manual task. I think. Which are the three best characteristics of LibreOffice that make the software stand out against the competition? Of course, if you have more than three, it's okay. But just to uh, summarize uh, uh, something that can stay in the mind of users or prospective users. Yeah, sure, sure. So, I mean, I think one of our huge strengths is our community. It's an open source project, it has multiple vendors and a huge diversity of contributors from, from all around the globe. Um, and that means that when I look through my career, you know, I've been in many different companies, uh, but my customers have had a continuity of support uh, and services through some quite amazing industry upheavals, you know, through some microsystems arriving and disappearing, turning into Oracle, now, my VM, you know, so, uh, and Novell, Attachment, Microfocus, uh, you know, being spun out to Calabra. And those people still have the same excellent support and services that they've they grown to expect and appreciate uh, around the code base. So if you, if you made a bet on it, um, it's not there at the whim of, of any one uh, company or what choice you make now. And I think that, that makes it a very safe, safe choice. No one can kill your software investment unilaterally. And the software just keeps improving, as we see. So I think, I think the open sourceness is, is probably my top. Uh, one of the things, of course, Calabra's mission is to drive open source. So I, I sort of tie my second thing there in, in terms of the power to drive your own destiny around that. Uh, you can choose your upgrade cycle. You can choose your UX. Uh, you know, you can you can tweak it. I mean, we, we have customers who have who we've worked with closely. have been quite difficult to deal with, probably because of their extremely uh, directive uh, attention to detail. You know, we want we want your you know mobile phone version to have buttons that look exactly like this and do this and. We're not happy with this particular interaction and we can fix all that that's there's nothing that can't be fixed i think that's really uh, that's really powerful and you can't get that elsewhere really it's 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 amazingly uh, powerful and then i think thirdly probably just this um this technology base the LibreOffice technology to build products on that um and the joy of, of being able to bundle and own this and put it into your own product is really incredibly powerful so you know lots of people need an office piece <clears throat> And, you know, you can buy it in from somewhere else, uh, you know, or you can use someone else's web service, or you can try and reuse a, you know, a Microsoft Office product in some strange way. Uh, but you're going to end up with lots of strange deployment problems with, you know, sort of API changes that you're not uh, able to cope with and that, that are forced onto you um, by the exigencies of that. And, of course, in terms of licensing, it's complicated. So I think, you know, having, having that base of Collabor Online, you know, we've got something like 50 plus million Docker image downloads everywhere. They're driving... Uh, that collaborative uh, document editing, um, getting it embedded everywhere from CERN, I guess, to probe the mysteries of the universe to these business users, sort of uh, file sync and share needs. Moodle, it's there uh, for people with their homework assignments for their students. And, you know, I think open source really is, uh, you know, is the payload, control of your destiny uh, and collaboration with others around your documents. I think LibreOffice delivers that and Collabor is thrilled to be part of that story and to produce products based on the technology 
and to sponsor the conference. So I encourage you, come and see what we're up to. Okay. Thank you, Mike.